All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, friend of the show, the Pablo Demons head coach, Coach Silverfield here with me up there in Chicago. Coach Silverfield, how you doing, brother? Good to talk to you again. I'm good. I'm good, man. Just got back from the Bahamas. It was some great weather over in the Bahamas. It came back to about 30 degrees in Chicago, but I'm glad to be back in the city. I hear that, Coach. Tell me about that trip, man, uh, getting your guys the MTs early, early in the year, tough competition, get you guys ready for that Big East play coming up, man. You know, obviously, um, the, the results didn't come out the way we wanted them to come out. Um, but we did learn a little bit about our team over there. It was a great bonding experience for our team. So it was good. You know, they do a great job at the Baja Mar running that tournament. The competition is great. So you couldn't ask for a better tournament to go. I wish we would have been a little healthier. I wish we would have came out with two wins. But it was definitely a great learning experience for our guys and I think it will help us to prepare for the Big East, and it'll be a learning experience for us. No doubt, Coach. You got to play some close games for your guys, Coach Field. And, you know, as you know, you and I both know, we can put in practice time on the clock and go over the scenarios, but we actually live with another team and referees. That's how you really get the true experience of how to deal with late game close situations. Because as you and I both know this, Coach, that Big East come down to possessions. It's not talent. Every night it's possessions every, every night. Who executes? You're exactly right. And, you know, I really learned that last year. Obviously, the first year here at DePaul, my first year as the head coach in the Big East, and games come down to possessions. Um, there were some games that we won on the last possessions in the last two or three minutes of the game. There's some games we let get away from us. So we're going to be in a lot of similar situations that we were in in the Bahamas. And you got to learn how to figure out how to close those games because it's going to come down to two or three key possessions the last four or five minutes of a game, whether that's a free throw box out, um, not giving up that offensive rebound, um, getting a good offensive shot. So it, it comes down to all of those things, executing offensively what you want, and just things like that. That's a matter of winning and losing. No doubt, Coach. You're some older guys, man. So I feel like, because you know we have young dudes on the court look, looking at you for direction, where do I want one, one down or five for whatever the play call is, Older dudes can kind of see how the dude is playing him. Say, okay, you doing A, I'm going to do Z. I'm going to do B, you're going to do C. So having older guys, you have an older roster, where they ain't played before, and can kind of on the fly see what's going on and make a plays that way and help you all win as well. You know, we do have some older guys on our team. You know, Javon Johnson, Johnson um, Mo Gibson, E. Ralph Penn, um, your Nay, obviously yours out right now. Nick Agenda, he's out right now. Caleb Murphy, who's out. You know, the, you know, the problem we're having a little bit is even the older guys haven't played a lot of basketball together. You know, we have six new guys on this team, six returning guys. So we have some older, experienced guys. They just haven't played a lot of basketball together with the guys transferring in and so forth. No doubt. Let me ask you about that, Coach. You know, you're going from year one to year two, so I'll ask you about that down the road here, not really as so we chat. But hey, how, how do you go about to the jail Young men who's out to play together on the fly, tinkering rotations on the fly to figure out the right combo. As you have guys out, as we talked about, you have guys out right now, but it could bode well for down the road that guys play early in the year. And if something happens down the road again, they'll be, they'll be ready to play. Because I know when I play ball, I told you that you no, know, the backups will be ready to go. I play football, as you know, so you know how it is. So you guys got to be prepared and they know what you know what we call. So having those guys play now, help you down February and March here? Without a doubt. You know, it's a work in progress, and that's really what you use the non-conference for, to get the team to jail, to get them comfortable playing with one another in your exhibition games and your non-conference games, and hopefully that carries over to the Big East. Unfortunately, we have had some injuries, <clears throat> and injuries happen throughout the course of the year, and I tell guys all the time, you have to stay ready because you never know when your number is going to be called. So you got to be ready when that opportunity presents itself. So right now, it's giving guys like Zion Cruz, who's a freshman, um, was a very good player coming out of high school. But it's giving him an opportunity to earn more minutes than what he probably would have played if a guy like Caleb Murphy had been healthy right now. Ahmad Bynum, a you know, guy that registered last year who's a freshman, even though he was here last year, still hadn't played in any games. And this is giving him an opportunity to step up right now. Um, guy like Deshaun Nelson, who came from junior college with your name, Nick Agenda being out right now, 
he's allowed to step in and play a much bigger role than kind of what was expected going into the year. So them guys just had to take advantage of the opportunity. I think that will help them in the future. It would help them in Big East play. And when their numbers call, they're going to be ready from this experience they're having right now. No doubt. And I feel like, you know, I feel like, and I, I love this too by ball is because because you, you and I both know how important that play, play development is. Sometimes play development comes on being on the court too. So yeah. I feel like that's going to be helping because we want all the jewelry we want to, as we talked about. But we get on that court, actually play, get that real experience. It's going to make you better one way or another. Or if you don't, we, we know what's going to happen to you at, down the road. You, you got to get out there and play at some point. You know, the player development is great. Getting in that gym, putting in the work, obviously you got to do that to give yourself a chance. But you got to get in the game and play. It's just like my Bynum was here with us last year. But, you know, he loses his senior year of high school to COVID. He red shirts last year. He hadn't played a real organized basketball game with referees for two years. So it's nothing like getting out there on that court, being able to get your second win, um, making plays and, you know, doing things like that out there. So, you, you, you know, time on the court is very, very valuable to learn from that experience out there. Guys need that. No doubt, and you got a, a big game coming up on this weekend, Texas a and by the SEC. Uh, I know Buzz Williams does a good job down there, man. And uh, a couple of some of those guys on film is just guys have to take on these uh, dudes from, from A&M, man. You know, Buzz Williams is one of my better friends. Um, we worked together <clears throat> at the University of Texas Arlington a long, long time ago. So me and Buzz are very, very close. Buzz's team's always play extremely hard he's got great talent they have great depth so it's definitely going to be a challenge for us um a team that's going to be very good in the sec last year a team that probably should have gotten the ncaa tournament <clears throat> last year and um they're definitely going to be right there this year as well so we're going to have to be prepared for that game on friday it's obviously the big game um a power five team coming in here day after thanksgiving so we're going to be at our have to be at our best to give ourselves a chance to win on friday no doubt. And we're being Black Friday, supposed to come out there. Most of the people <laughs> off work, they can come out at Central Center and support you all because, you know, this is a big game out there for you guys, man, having them to come to see you. So I feel like the fans out of Chicago, you can come on out there and support DePaul, the Blue Demons doing big things out there. It's Black Friday. You ain't doing nothing. You're shopping on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I hope they come out. I hope they ate some great food on Thursday and now they're ready to get out of the house on Friday and come out and support the Blue Demons on Friday. So, we're looking forward to having an AM here, but we hope we have a great crowd on Friday as well. And talk about this, Coach Stubberfield, having a Dwayne Peavy being your AD man and his support man, and as you all building this basketball program back up to where it used to be, man. What about having the support of somebody like him in your corner who understands the game of basketball and been in your shoes before? I tell you what, Dwayne Peavy has been great in what he's doing at DePaul for this athletic department. He's doing a great job. You know, Dwayne Peavy really gets it. You know, he worked in the SEC office. He worked at the University of Kentucky. So he knows what it takes to win at a high level. Um, he's seen it done at a high level. And so for him to come here to DePaul, he knows what it's going to take for us to get this program back up to the top, what it's going to take to compete in the Big East and on a national stage. And um, he's doing a great job fundraising, and he's giving us all the support we need to be successful here at DePaul. So, you know, it takes a great administration to be able to get it done. It takes the support of the administration from the top down. Um, president Rob, who just came on board a couple of months ago, is a great president. And obviously, Dwayne Peavy, leading our ship as the athletic director, has given us everything that it takes to be successful. And the big thing about it, I keep reiterating this, is he's seen it done. And he come in and his motto is to dream big. And all of the things he's saying, I'm totally 110% behind. And I know we can get it done with him, you know, at the head of this leadership. And yeah, you all can be Chicago school as well, because you all in the Big East, you know, so you can be Chicago school. And I feel like a lot of schools doing this. Denzel's doing real well over at Loyola, Chicago. You got Gerald doing good. Chicago State's is causing trouble, playing hard every night. So talk about just the ball in Chicago, how you guys, you, yourself, Denzel and Gerald are doing good for you all schools as, as being new coaches in, in, your, in your programs right now. You know, they, they're both doing a great job with their programs. And um, obviously, Chicago is a great city. But again, Loyola, Chicago State, them guys have their guys ready to play each and every night. They play extremely hard. And it's great to have them here in the city. 
and you know, and probably you know all them playing well as well. It's recruiting battles for you guys too. It's about the same Chicago dudes, North and South Side dudes, man. So how's how's recruiting been for you and us since you all been there? Show what you could do last year, winning those games you won, winning fifteen games last year. So how's recruiting been for you in that in that DePaul Chicago, Chicago land, Midwestern football? You all all sitting up there, man. You know, that's the biggest part of this. You you got to have players to get this done. And, and recruiting is a major piece of that. And we've got everything here at DePaul to make that happen. You know, for number one, Chicago is a great city. Um, there's great talent in the city of Chicago, in the suburbs, in the state. And there's great coaching. Um, there's great high school coaches, there's great AAU coaches. So what you get with that is guys that really know how to play have a feel for the game that have been coached when you get them into your program. And for us at DePaul, we feel like we can recruit nationally as well. Um, there's nowhere we can't get on a direct flight. Um, DePaul has name recognition from the success they've had in the past. Um, we feel like we can recruit internationally. We feel like we can recruit JUCO. So we feel like we got the best of all the worlds here. And when we, once we get a young man on this campus in Lincoln Park, once he sees Win Trust Arena, all the things that we have to offer, we feel like we'll have a great chance of getting them. So to answer your question, I do like feel like our recruiting is going well. Um, it needs to continue to go well. We need to continue to recruit hard because players are players. You know, we need players to get this done. And usually you have the best players. You're giving yourself the best chance to win. So we got to recruit and we continue to recruit hard and try to get the best talent we can get here at DePaul. But I do feel like we got everything in place to get that done. No, um, the, my man Mur Murphy's out from Atlanta. But we'll talk about uh, uh him and what he's brought to the program when he when he gets back healthy again and coming down here to Atlanta and finding players like Caleb come play for you guys, man. You know, Caleb Murphy had a great summer. Um, had a great fall leading up to his injury. Um, what this is what he brings his athleticism, his quickness with the basketball his ability to be able to score, his ability to be able to guard multiple positions. And the thing about Caleb is he's done it at a high level. You know, he led South Florida in scoring last year. So he knows what it takes to win at a high level. Um, he's been in an environment where he's played in front of 10,000 on the road in, in Memphis or at the University of Houston or at SMU. So he's not going to get rattled by that. And, um, you know, he's just a great young man, um, has a great spirit. So just looking forward to getting him healthy, um, getting him out on the court, and um, he's going to bring so much to this team that I think will even elevate it to a higher level. Well, that's one for you, Coach. This man, talk talk about the difference between year one now to being year two. How how different has it been for you? How has this whirlwind being the head coach of the ball been, man, on this journey you guys on? Hey, it, it, it never ends. So year one and year two, obviously year one had its challenges, but year two does as well. Um, it's a job where you're on the job every day. Um, there's never a day off in this job or whatever it may be from a recruiting standpoint of academics with our guys, um, practice, individual drills, or whatever it may be. So, you know, it's a job where you're on every day. Um, I have a great staff around me that I think has been very helpful in this process, and you can't do it without a great staff. So things are slowing down a little bit, but, it, again, it never ends. It's 365 days a year. And, um, you know, that's what we signed up for. But I wouldn't choose to do anything different. No doubt, Coach. Well, I'll be cheering for you, man. I hope you win that Big East, get that big dance, man. Uh, I'll be, like I said, man, we'll talk to you the, the next year uh, and see what you're doing in February there. Hopefully you on top of them standards, man. And like I said, you got to support out here in the ATL, Coach. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on. And next time we have this conversation, I hopefully we are talking about going to postseason play that past year. Yes, indeed. Coach, thanks. That's a lot, Coach. Hey, man, you be warm, man. You be safe up there in Chicago, brother. All right. Appreciate you now. Anytime. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you. All right.